So hello everyone, welcome to this session on Autodesk Construction Cloud Update, our common data environment specifically on BIM 360. Uh, so this session, I wanted to cover what new we have uh, on our BIM 360 platform as of today, and uh, uh, what are our recent announcements as well. And this will cover mostly a couple of slides on what exactly is our BIM 360 if you are new, and then we'll go straight away into the product and see how it works on uh, with our products and uh, clouds uh, integrated together. So first I wanted to bring in the uh, safe harbor. So in case if we were discuss anything on a third party product or, or a future, uh, it may be uh, as an indicative, may not be committing, committing anything on the dates or anything for any future discussions that we do. It's a safe harbor that I want you to just read uh, before we start the presentation. <clears throat> okay, so let's move further. So before I start my presentation, uh, we all understand we are going through a tough time um, here with uh, a lot of changes in the way we are working. Uh, many of us are facing lockdowns, uh, the entire uh, nation, and we are finding a way to continue our business as usual uh, with different tools and uh, probably different technologies that we have uh, with us. So Autodesk is also working along uh, within this situation to give a customer different options that you can use uh, to make your work from home easier. So we have two main things that uh, we have included in here is one is uh, an ability for you to request a home use license. So one seat of your license will be entitled to one home use license. There is some, there is this link that I have shared which has this information. So you know, I quickly show you uh, 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 on the link. So this is our first link where you have you can go. If you just look for request a license to home software at Autodesk, at, uh, Autodesk page, uh, it will give you this particular link, which kind of tells you how you can use a license in case if you're working on a network uh, license, so you can borrow it. Um, uh, you can also use VPN. Uh, but we do see some kind of challenge if the VPNs have string norms or they are very strict in terms of uh, your company policies. Uh, the only thing that we help control is the uh, flex LM timeout, like keep the timeout to 1 million as a system variable so that it allows you to take a license. But in case if you face certain challenges, I would recommend you use the borrow license uh, and take, a, uh, take your machine home and work. Now, there would be a lot of uh, uh, users who may not have a laptop, who may be working on a high-end desktops in office, you cannot take it back. So in case if you have a machine at home, you can take a home use license. Uh, this, this particular product uh, page specifically tells the product uh, which you can use, any, any terms and uh, uses, what are the eligible project pro product list, and how to activate uh, the home use. So, this page will help you sign in and get a home use activation for your uh, home license. So take you, uh, use of this in this situations where you want to work from home for all your uh, team members to access files. Now this is about enabling your softwares at home. But at the same time, we also have announced from uh, our CEO, Andrew, uh, that we will be putting many of our cloud-based solutions specifically when we talk about the BIM 360 platform that you see here, uh, which will be now available for you as an extended trial. So in case if you have files and folders that you maintain in Office Network, you can push them onto any of these cloud. So you can use OneDrive, Dropbox that you have, but from also from the Autodesk point, we can uh, you can use BIM 360 doc Use the BIM 360 design to collaborate if you are using Revit work sharing environment and use that. So this announcement has come on um, uh, March 24th. 
and what it says is uh, up to August 7th, I believe, uh, you can use all these products as a commercial use license. So generally when you are working on a trial, it is uh, earlier used to be suggested to use only for a trial and not for a commercial use. But now with these uh, announcements, you can use any of these BIM 360 uh, or AutoCAD web and mobile uh, free for next 90 days. So up to, I believe, uh, August 7th is something that you can uh, use this uh, tool to use and you can take benefit of that. And that's the reason what we are doing now is uh, giving more insight on how you can use this tool uh, with your Revit products. So whether you're using AutoCAD, whether you're using Revit, or any of the other products that we have, you can really integrate this BIM 360 and work just like your normal uh, office uh, from home as well. So let's come into our presentation. So these are the two slides. So probably later on, we'll share this on our link, which you can uh, 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 use it uh, and access it and read these details uh, later on. Now let's move into the Autodesk BIM 360 solution uh, presentation. Uh, before I start my presentation, I wanted to just give a housekeeping uh, info like all the questions will take it at the end. So if you have any questions, uh, please add it on the Q&A tab or a chat box. And once my presentation is over, I'll go through uh, these questions if the time permits or we'll take it back and please share us your contact if we are not answered your question so that we can email you and communicate it or call you back uh, for that. Uh, uh, question. So now for those who are completely new for the BIM 360, well, I wanted to bring in this particular slide first to just to set the concept up on about the BIM 360 and then we'll move it into the demo part of the BIM 360. The first one is uh, we haven't changed anything the way software works. So as a gen regular user of any of our product, whether it is AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Revit, you will be using our product as it is. It's only change is the way you save the file. Generally, when we save, we generally go into file, save, or save as, go into a C or D drive, locate the folder and save it. Now, instead of doing that, we just use the same file, open or file, save as, but instead of going to the C drive, we locate the BIM 360 and go exactly the folder structures that we have created in BIM 360 and save the file over there. Now, once we have that particular file uploaded on BIM 360, what it allows me to do is it, it will now be accessed to anyone across the globe who has access to that particular folder and he can access that file from anywhere at any time. And once we also move this file into a BIM 360 platform, it enables an HTML format uh, of that. So what it allows us to do is that CAD file or a Revit model or a Civil 3D Navisworks model now you can open in any Internet Explorer or, or our BIM 360 app. It can be opened on a laptop with minimum configuration or it can be opened in, uh, in, in your mobile phone using a BIM 360 app or a Chrome or a Safari installed. So this will help you to review the file anytime, anywhere with minimum um, uh, resources. So even if you are not in front of your machine. If you just wanted to review that on a mobile, you can do that and comment it back, uh, your suggestions or your feedback into the model and that will be communicated back to the team. So this is how we can have a, a, a collaboration started up. And that BIM 360 now allows us to even create a common data environment where multiple people can work, add on their information and share and collaborate into a project more effectively on a real-time basis. Now, how this BIM 360 was developed specifically for those who are new to BIM 360 who's, who wants to adopt to this BIM 360 uh, due to the situation, try, move into this extended trial. Uh, this BIM 360 is developed from uh, a long time because the first uh, prototype, I would say uh, the first effort was through A360 Drive in 2010 and 12, where we have effectively used it and it was quite popular to 
put a drawing file or a Revit file and just view it directly on that. And we also, allow, at that particular time, we call it as AutoCAD 360 uh, mobile. <clears throat> so now it is called Autodesk Web or web.autocad.com, which allows you to access uh, a lighter version of AutoCAD on a mobile or Internet Explorer. So, so A360 Drive was our first point of development in that. And then in 2015, you would have seen that Drive is still there, but it has further developed into something called BIM 360 Team. And this allowed us to do collaboration, uh, file viewing, and access anytime, anywhere. Now, collaboration was the first major step on this uh, integration where you can put your Revit file <coughs> and do a real-time collaboration using work sharing and one one Now, using that, we also were able to identify that once the file comes into a, a HTML or a cloud-based platform, it can then be used to various other norms. So whether you want to take it to the field, you want to do planning, you want to do layout, you want to do, do model coordination, all those things can also be incorporated into that cloud model. And this is how in, from 2018 March onwards, this was segregated into docs, glue, layout, uh, field, plan, and also BIM 360 ops. Now, what is the added benefit of that is we were able to take our model to field, add field management tools like checklists, daily logs, reports, and other things. But also we were also able to move this file into operation and maintenance using iot's and other hardwares available on that market and this is the area which is still getting explored using the tool called forge and more and more studies as well as integrations are happening on on a daily basis that we see on on the market today now if you see on a common data environment with bim 360 we always keep data onto a central location and everything that we wanted to extract we take it out from there and this was kind of not possible when we keep this file on a local server or a c drive or a d drive of a machine because once we have this model on a cloud we can do a lot of stuff like we can run a lot of analysis on top of it we can comment on that we can create issues uh, we can handle issues and uh, uh, issues on that rfis checklist all those things can be added onto that particular model and they can be taken out as a report and all the activity reports that you want. And with files, staying on a cloud environment can also be given granted specific permissions to specific user and control how the files are getting distributed across the project. And you have all the ability to view this file in a non-product based platform. So. If you have just an Internet Explorer, you wanted to still review that model, you can see each and every detail whenever you prefer to do. And this cloud BIM 360 works with all our products. So uh, whether you're using Revit, you're using uh, AutoCAD, InfraWork, Civil 3D, Naviswork, all of these files are straight away integrated. At the same time, we also support more than 50 file formats which are non-autodesk. If this is a 3D model, we support it in BIM 360, you can put that. We support PDF and Office directly. So you can edit an Office file like Word, Excel directly in BIM 360. You don't have to download, open the file, edit, and then upload it back again. So it works directly on BIM 360. Apart from that, we have a tool called Forge, which integrates anything that needs to come out of our BIM 360. Say for example, a sensor data or a camera data from site, which you wanted to incorporate with the model. And this is where all our partner apps and partner uh, development um, channel and uh, our team works to develop different apps that can fit into BIM 360 and you can do it. Uh, certain examples is capturing plan versus actual. Uh, capturing site activities using camera and all those things can also be integrated using uh, this Forge pla uh, platform again. Now coming into a BIM 360 modules, so this is what we have. So we have our BIM 360 modules um, available with us, which is first one which we know is the document management, which is something that we'll be covering today. It has the folder structures, review, transmittal issues, 
and now we have also added review processes onto that. Uh, so this is something that will become our storage space for all our data and extract information out as and when needed. The second one, which we also talked about today is the Revit cloud collaboration. Like when you have Revit file into a work sharing environment, <coughs> how you can <coughs> access it, how you can save it, how you can update it. <coughs> so this is about Revit cloud work sharing file. And then apart from that, we have model coordination, which does model uh, aggregation and clash detection on that. Then we have field management, which does template checklist issues and daily logs from the site. And then you have project management, which include two main things, RFI and submittals. And last but not the least is the insight. That is whatever we have done on BIM 360. And if you want to capture out report of say quality, safety, and a project lead dashboard about all the activities we can have the insight used for that and this insight is available for everyone so basically doc and design is something that we wanted to cover in today's session and then we have model coordination field management project management that we'll cover in the acs sessions later on so now let's see what all benefits that we get when we move into a cloud is first it gives you a desktop access both in Windows as well as uh, Apple device, uh, uh, laptops. Then we have mobile in that iOS as well as Android, both are supported. And then it has an unlimited storage and unlimited number of projects that you can do. So when you opt for BIM 360, even when you're doing this particular trial for 90 days, you get unlimited storage and you can keep any lim number of files whatever size that you prefer there is no limit for that and you can create any number of projects on that so now let's move into the demo part like how we can utilize it so so all you need is a simple internet explorer to start with so when you go so first let me go into bim 360 design trial now those who have not yet started uh, the first thing I would suggest is just click on to this link that comes first. I believe this is the one. Try BIM 360 design for free. So this is what we have extended up to uh, 90 days. You enter your credential uh, and just say try agree, uh, try the free uh, tool and you will get a link to start uh, setting up your model. So I'm going to start with how you set up a BIM 360 and keep it and then how you start working on on BIM 360 module. So you select this try and you will get a link and that link will look something like this. So this is where you will first be taken into that. So first is a doc because doc is the platform where we will first use to create any of that. And when you first opt, you will be taken into an account administration page. That means where you need to start your uh, project. So you need to sign in. So I'm sorry, I forgot to mention one thing. You need to be, you need to have an Autodesk ID to that. So it's a single sign-on. So for all your Autodesk needs, you can create your single Autodesk ID and log in using that uh, credential. So whether it is your Revit you're accessing, whether you're using AutoCAD or BIM 360, you just use your BIM 360 or a single AutoCAD, Autodesk account. Now, <clears throat> this is your setup for uh, BIM 360. So what you see, I'm right now in the account administration that you see here. And these nine dots is what uh, is a context when you over here. Now, this is what I get to see uh, to control all my project. Now, this is account admin. That means the administration of the entire site. So when you go for this trial, it will be giving you some kind of site name that you see over here. So this is my site that you see. And under this site, Niranjan Autodesk, I have so many projects which are running on that. So this is how I, I create different projects. So to create a project is very fairly simple. Um, I, I can say this is the 31st March demo. And then what type of project it is. And you can define some of the parameters, what type of construction type project values if, if you need start and end date and also any kind of image and address and once you do that you can just simply save and continue so this is how easy it is to continue this is just asking for the service i'll come to come to this in a little while 
I'll just say finish and you can see it has created a project over here 31st March demo now what other things that I need to understand while setting up BIM 360 is a uh, role company and member now what is role so role is something that I wanted to categorize my entire team into uh, a, so every company will have say for example uh, architectural team structural team MEP services team uh, commercial manager project manager cost and estimation team and so on so you can create those roles over here so architect BIM manager civil engineer of this now what happens here is you can assign these roles to members that you assign on this project so there could be chances where you have two or three companies where you can assign a specific members with architects so you can combine architects from company a b and c into one group so that that way i can define all my architects into one group bim manager into one group and define what type of access they have now what is these things these are like document management so architect will have access to document management whether they should have access to project management field management model coordination design collaboration and insight i can define it there if i mark them as admin they will by default become admin for that if i remove admin they will just becomes the user for that if i wanted to add a different type of uh, role site executive or something like that i can just create a role directly from here and add it so this is how i can create my custom list i'll come to this roles and responsibility and how important it is later on uh, uh, in in the project because these are quite interesting like we can the way we can use this role throughout our project now coming next is the company now company e could be those uh, contractors subcontractors or vendors with whom you are constantly working you can add them as a company name so a company name uh, that you prefer uh, what type of trading company it is some kind of image and just save that uh, and it creates a, a company address for that it's as simple as that now once these two are done you can add members now adding members there are multiple options you can add members by individual uh, email ids you enter the email ids over here so if i add my personal one which i believe is not included in this and when i say add it asks me what type of role that that i remember i told you and what type of company so if i type in the first four numbers it lists down all the companies that i have added on up over here so that companies i can add and i can save that and create the uh, user now i also have an option to add another account admin now this is necessary because in case if you have you wanted to add two members who can control this account admin if someone is absent or something like that you can add an account admin note that that person will have complete access to all the projects members and roles and setting up analytics and other things for that invite executives as it says they get an overview dashboard access they don't see all the project details and other things but they will just see all the dashboard of all the current activities running issues rfis and so on on the site and so on you can also import members from a excel file so if you have multiple names uh, that you wanted to import at once just put it under this email id first name last name and the default company and just <coughs> upload that select that file and upload it will bring that user over here now this way it's fairly easy to set up this first and remember when i'm adding this member it is not consuming any of my licenses it is just for my reference and benefit that we constantly work we wanted to use that now in the analytics this shows me how many users are currently active how many license I'm using in uh, how many internal member external members uh, uh, which project how many account how many users are working how many architects are there how many electrical construction management roles are there and how much is the time that I have for my current subscription so this tells me 
all this information now let's come back into our model which is which i just created that is 31st march demo now what all services i wanted to add in so in case if i uh, if i log in into my bim 360 account so i'll i'll log in separately on a separate window just to show you so you can see i have access to almost all the projects that is there but it will still not list me bim 3 uh, march 31st whatever i have created now that is because there are no services as assigned to that so i go into this model now you see i am in a project admin state that means i have to set up this particular project now you can see members there are no members on that so nobody can access any data on that because there is no services that has been assigned so first i'll assign some say i wanted to enable document management i'll add myself so i'll add my autodesk id and i'll save now you can see well, as soon as i keep adding this will have my document management added up and it will shoot out a mail one as soon as i get added now if i wanted to start design collaboration i have to access design collaboration and add my email id for that now as i am adding into that you can see the members automatically keeps updated and what type of access he has whether he can add insight i can add an insight for that and now you see here i am consuming one license for that now if in case niranjan has added what is consuming one license in doc so if we go into our project the account so whether i am consuming one license as a niranjan if i have consumed one license that one license I'm using to access anywhere which I have access in that. So it's not like if I add Niranjan here and this project, it will consume two license. It will be just consuming one license only. So I have this 31st March demo and you can see I have been added up. Now, when I click onto this project, now you see I have these two enabled document and design collaboration. Now, if I go into this document management, click onto that now it takes me into the document management base page that you see over here so this is completely fresh and a new one uh, that uh, you have so in case if you are not the first time that you're using and uh, say if you go back into your project admin and you wanted to use some of the previous projects to be used while enabling this service you can still use that so for that i'm sorry you need to go to the account administration uh go into this particular project you can't do it now but when you're starting a project when you're enabling a service you have this option to select the project so you click the drop down and use the projects that you have already created so the all the folder structures that you prefer in your company will automatically get added up over here so in your document management that you see here there are two folder structures by default which will give you plan and project now plan is i would say all cad files revit files or any cad related drawings and a vector pdf is supported up over here you cannot put any word excel or anything over there project file will support all your file formats and anything uh, cad as well as non cad excel uh, raster pdf or word file and you can also edit word file directly on the go you don't need to download and upload a file now these are the main files so if you want to create a folder just click onto that and say architectural now if you wanted to create a subfolder you go into that and create a subfolder say interiors or something like that and uh, each folders have a drop down which can give you what type of permission you wanted to grant now since i have marked myself as project admin i i can access that but if you wanted to add somebody else say my colleague vivek dot ramesh at autodesk.com i can add this and select a permission level so you can see these are the different permission levels that i get uh, to add so one is the view only that means this person can only view files that i have uploaded he cannot download so you can see this is the uh, added update so earlier even if you give a view access he was able to download the file but with this new update he cannot upload or download the content he can just view it on internet explorer 
Second, we have added, we have bifurcated the view only to now view plus download. So we can view and download and can add markup issues, but cannot upload content. So second one is upload only. So now we have again separated upload with <coughs> view and download. So what this particular thing does is he can only upload his content, but cannot view any content on that particular folder. So specifically, if you have a folder where you are putting cost and estimation, from different vendors, but you don't want each vendors to see each other's files. So grant them upload only so they can just upload their content and view, but they cannot <coughs> see any other's file. The next is view, download and upload as it suggests. It gives you all features. And then lastly is upload plus edit. This is specifically used when you're working on Revit, when you have work sharing environment grant this access because you want to edit that file on the go and finally is the full control that means you become a project admin you can add users remove users and so on so granting them access will be added up over here he will receive an email and you can see here i can remove him anytime i prefer but now he has full access to this folder but if you go into this plan folder you see he doesn't have that access so i have granted him this project so he can have access from this to all the lower projects so all the hierarchy which it belongs to he will have access to that now similarly under the project you can add project folders say cost or something <coughs> you can you can create folders and subfolders on that now now let us see how how this uh, Now let us see how this thing works. So let me close this permission button. Okay. Now to add or work on this file, there are multiple ways. So one way is like are using it as a standard Dropbox or a OneDrive that we have. So upload a, a file or drag and drop from a folder. You can do it that way. So uploading, it works that way. So you have a file, say 37 MB. You upload it. Uh, so this is what it does. It uploads, it scans for that file, identify the sheets and put and publish that file. So <clears throat> I am uploading a file. Bear with me, I am a home network. So um, it may be a little bit slow, uh, but here you can see my Revit file of 37 MB is uploaded. I say continue. Now what it is doing is extracting how many sheets are there on that particular file. And then it will publish that document for me. We'll see how the documents get published i have published it under interior now say under this i have another file called pdfs which are coming in now under pdf say i have another pdf files which are multi sheet pdf which i wanted to add in and now let us see if i'll upload this multi sheet pdf so i'll go into properties uh, sorry not properties file open now you can see this is nothing but a 19 sheet document this is generally what we received most of the time. Now let us see how BIM 360 handles it. So I'll upload this uh, PDF and I'll say continue and it will start extracting. I can come out of this page and continue working on that. And in this particular published log, you can see all the activities that are happening on that. So, so this is how I can upload a file. Now imagine if I wanted to work on a daily basis, I wanted to work on that. So when I'm working, <coughs> excuse me on autocad or revit i use the same way i enable myself into revit or when i'm logging in into autocad i enable myself over here i log in into the same account because this is what will define what level of access and which bim 360 site i have access now when you install bim 360 i would always recommend to go and install this desktop connector for autodesk Oh, sorry desktop connector bim 360 go into that uh, you just have to enter a few uh, i think yeah email id it will send you a link or you can just click get desktop by entering these values it's a 200 mb file what it generally does is when you go into your uh, my computer it will give you these two drives now now what these two drives does is if i go into my bim 360 you can see I have so many projects under my account. Now I can also change the site. This is my account, right? Ranjan. Now there could be a time when other companies would have invited me in their project. 
So I can go and change that and see these are the other companies that have invited me. So Devansh has invited me on one of his projects. So I can click and access that. And same way, this is my site. I can go into my site and see all my project. Now, what this BIM 360 is going to do is when you click onto that, it take, shows you all the sites which you have access to. You can click into your site and go over here and locate all the files that uh, you have access for. Now, you can also right click onto that if you're going offline or something or if you're traveling. You can go into work offline mode so that it doesn't require internet or you can go and come back say refresh drive and it will refresh this drive for you so this is how it will work so you get bim 360 you click onto that and it will take you so you can see the 31st march demo that we created is there if we click onto that now you can see the project file and you can see the cost included on that so so these files uh, gives you access onto that now when we are working on revit you will see those things getting listed down over here in case if it is not listing just quickly refresh because i opened revit before uh, i created that a quick refresh will help you update this list or you can also use file open go to the my computer and locate it through bim 360 it's it's fairly similar in either way so so you can access all your projects like you can see 31st demo march i can see so what i'm doing is instead like when we are saving we go into a d drive and save it somewhere just go into my computer use bim 360 and save it here or other way like what you see here is the bim 360 demo on the quick link that you see here i click onto that it shows me plan and project folders you can see architectural and followed by interior and pdf that you see here so i can open file directly from here so uh, so let it finish publishing so when let's go back into that so now you see pdf is published and revit is also shown so let's go into revit first now you can see all my revit files have been added up this is version one when i upload a new version it will become v2 and so on now see the benefit of having a revit file on cloud so if i'm reviewing any of the floor plans i want you to review only second floor plan i don't have to open the complete 300 400 mb file but i can just quickly go on uh, on that particular floor plan and open that so when i'm opening it's not just a simple revit converting into a pdf it is actually a revit file that you're opening and it has all the tags that you have assigned and created for so specifically if you wanted to further review and see okay let's see this particular section click onto that it takes you to that particular section there are some further details over there you want to review this model you go into that section it takes you through that now it will also list down all the places that you have been through clicking onto that and you can go back into the main model and review that as it is so it's much easier and also at the end down it will have a uh 360 modules uh so, sorry 3d module of that so it, it 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 also creates a 3d model that you see up over here and this 3d models you can cut section and other things like just your revit for reviewing you wanted to measure something it's fairly easy 10 feet you wanted to add angle measures everything that you prefer to do you can do that um, and also if you want to do some annotations you can do all the annotations will be marked as a, a markup that you go so there are multiple annotations like if you wanted to cloud base <coughs> and followed by a text it really helps you create a animation or oh, sorry uh, annotation so now by default all the annotations that i have done is private now this is because this is my view that i am doing right uh, so when i am in in the in my view all these annotations that i prefer i want this to be for my reference because if everybody start doing it uh, this whole markup will become like it will be really uh, uh, cumbersome to see so only those selected one which you wanted to publish you can publish for rest of the team remaining it will stay as it is now now this is about the revit file now i'll show if i have a similar revit file in my 
project folder. So what I'll do is I'll upload the same Revit file and just show you it. it there is no difference, but I just want to show how this thing uh, handles it. So I'll take the same model and just drag and drop. And you can see now it is uploading that file directly. So this is not going into that process that we have mentioned. So let's wait for this to upload. Meanwhile, uh, this is a Revit file that we have seen. Let us see the PDF. So PDF is not yet up, but let us see what it says. So this is ready. I have to view. Now in that PDF, you remember there was about 19 sheets and BIM 360 needs to understand how it wants to segregate that. So I can say define the BIM uh, uh, template that I wanted to segregate. So what BIM 360 need is the drawing description and drawing number so that it can segregate that. So it allows us to specify the area from where we wanted to extract this information. So more, most probably my title blocks is here. So I'll say next and I'll get a template one. I'll name it as template one. Where is the number? I'll say number is defined somewhere here and that. So I'll cover maximum so it captures that. So you can see it will capture the data mentioned within that space of that. Now <clears throat> I have told these are the areas where you should look for title blocks. And then it will keep all your drawings, uh, sorry, PDF into that folder, giving that name extracted from the title block. So drawing, uh, number and the drawing title you can also go out and see this uh, later uh, so let us wait for this to upload so soon you will see this available over here so it is still publishing it may take a time so bear with me i'm working from home and presenting it so it may be a little bit slow so now let us see the publish so now here you can see uh, it shows me the list. Uh, it is the sheet, the area from where it is extracting and what value it has extracted. In case you feel this title is not correct, you can uh, uh, rename it or if it is all okay, you can just say publish all and it will publish that data onto that particular folder. So you can go out and move it. I'll close this. Okay, so let's see the PDF. Yeah, now you can see the PDF is uploaded. It gives name A001 site plan, A102 lower level. And you can see this is the same PDF that has been segregated into uh, so many documents. Uh, again, it's a vector PDF. And if you are, if it has been extracted from Revit, it will still retain the tagging that you have assigned to that. Say if you have a specific section, you wanted to go into that, it will open that PDF file for you. So it has that much intelligence kept from Revit. So in AutoCAD, if you are using and exporting it into PDF, make sure you're using the attribute definition that it retains some information where that sheet is and so on, and it, you can utilize it. Now, under project files, you see this Revit file and see it does not list me all the sheets separately, even though it was the same file. Now, this is how it works. So, in a project file, you will see a 3D view and a 2D view tabs over here. That's the only difference. This is the way it has been designed. So, you see the 3D view, you see you get all the uh, all the features, and when you go into this 2D view, you can see all the sheets of that. A certain things that really adds uh, a value to this BIM 360 is when you are reviewing this, as I mentioned, all these tags will work, but at the same time, you also have something called click view. So what it says is at any given time, you wanted to select a floor sheet plan and say, I wanted to view this model from here. It takes you right away on that particular model and you can review that floor plan. So that's easy. That's how easy it becomes. So you can go into rooms, review it, and then you wanted to exit place me and you come out. So some some cool features that helps you really uh, uh, handle that. 
Now, when I'm working on a Revit, say, now let's see, we are able to put files. We have seen how, how the file behaves in uh, different things. And probably, I probably may have to show you uh, how the Word file works. Now, say if I create a Word file, uh, I'll say document one, and I wanted to save this, okay? And say I save it in the desktop for time being. Right, and this is the document that I wanted to push in my BIM 360. Now I add a folder, Word file, just for our reference, right? And I love to load a file from the desktop, or I can just simply drag and drop also, either way. So this is my document file. So it will upload the content, and you will see the file available. Now you see, I don't have to download it every time. What I need to do is just open it and use uh, the online edit features on that. So I have an option to edit in browser. So when I click onto that, you see it is allowing me, all I need is my login. So it is taking me to my organization login page. I may need to add in with using my VPN because right now I'm working from home. So you can see I select, uh, just give me a moment so that I can act, provide access. I'll approve this. And once that is done, uh, if you're on a uh, office, it won't ask you, it will take you because you're on the office network. But since you're on outside the network, you can still do it. So. Oh, there is some problem. I think this is not giving me access. Okay, so let us go into document once again. Let me try one more time. If not, then I'll skip this. Okay, so edit in browser. this time it should take me because i already yeah so now i'll say this is new text now since i have already opened it twice it would have gone for two versions so this could be a version three next version three it's an office auto saving so it is automatically saving this file so when you say return and you go into bim 360 you see it will be automatically marked as i believe version 3 now so let me just close this you see now it has become version 3 so it controls the versions directly in my bim 360 now that's the part now let us see how we can access it from any of our softwares so if we are working on any level like whether we are starting a project or we are uh, at a very detailed level, at any level, we can start a model to push it into BIM 360. Say if I have a new file which I'm creating and I wanted to start that. So there are two ways by which I can start the uh, process. So one is I can start a Revit into two different ways. One is a standard, standalone Revit file. And second one is a collaborative file with work sharing environment. So let me first do a standard file. So uh, if I have anything to do on this, so if I wanted to save a file, uh, I can just simply go file, save as cloud model. So this is the added update on uh, uh, this year. So you can use a non-work sharing file and save it into a BIM 360 platform. So I just go over there and uh, select that folder so again it logs in it, it just tries to locate how many uh, projects that i have access with and then it will give me the list so it takes a bit of a time uh, depending on the network that you are connected but once it is loaded it is much faster so it is kind of looking at all my access so here you can see it is taking me to a project so i can drop down and select the project where i want i have the bim 360 demo i have a floor plan and a project files i can select onto this project files say i go into cost for some matter and i'll start this publish 
So what it is doing is it is saving this file under that cost folder of project. So uh, after a few minutes, like when I go into this cost, I can see this file populated over here. So it's saving the model, takes a bit of a time. Uh, it's not as quick as a local save, but it is fairly okay. So if, if you're working on a standard uh, Wi-Fi or a wireless in a 4G environment, 100 to 150 MB files may take about three to five minutes to open. That's what I've seen. And when you're opening these files, it always create a cache on your local system. So it's not like every time you save, it saves that 300 or 400 MB. It just change and updates the uh, delta value. That is what changes have happened so far. Your model has been saved on cloud. If we go here and refresh this, so maybe in some time you can see that file has started extracting. So once the extract is over, I can see this file under my cost. So you can see it is kind of publishing. So I will be able to access this file even from my mobile uh, when people are still working. So if I start working on that, keep saving it, it is going to save it in the uh, cloud system itself so you see it doesn't save this on my local machine every save it saves now you see it's just updating a quick kbs just a uh, refresh and once that is done every save over there will give you a version 2 you can see two versions have been automatically added here so i can access that file click onto that and see it in my bim 360 or a mobile application so how nice it is like if a team is working live and other people can really see it live changes over there. So even though this is not a cloud work sharing environment, but it will work. Same thing happens for your AutoCAD as well. So when you're working on AutoCAD, uh, say this is a, a file that you have with you, you wanted to open that. So I believe currently it's, it's a cloud model. So when you open that file, you can file save as dwg and then you can use desktop my computer locate that folder and save it over there it's as simple as that and similarly when you have to open any file just file open desktop your bim 360 locate that file where you have kept and just simply open that file it, it just like instead of going to a c and d drive you open this file over here and it works for almost every other software as well. Now, when you are working on on any of these projects, so let so this is fine. Let's go into a project where I have some particular drawings file has already been added up. Right. So there are a lot of folder structures and other things that you see. Now you also see in that complex. Uh, models of infra work can also be brought in directly in BIM 360. So even if you're working on infra work models, you can save this model because every infra work has an option to save that model. So you see it brings out the entire city map and it is how easy it is. So even in infra work, sometimes it takes a lot of time to rotate and open, but you can see the quality and the input that you see here you can just bring infra work model also. Now, other thing is like, say if you're working on a Navis work environment, say you have multiple Navis work files over there. So most of the time we suggest like, if you have to collaborate within different teams and you have certain issues, you wanted to assign it to somebody, get it resolved. We recommend you use Navis work. Let, let's see a reason why. Say if you have a model of Navis work over here, you can link those issues with your model. So here you have a, a, a Navis work model and say I, I see an issue right over here. There is no roof or something and I wanted to inform the architectural team. So I can say create <coughs> and I'll mark this over here and say um, roof is missing in this design. Now I can assign this either to an individual email IDs that I have added or the companies or the roles you see here. So now I may have architect from different companies working together. If I set that as role to architect, it will by default notify all the architects from different companies, either a company 
individual or role so i can define it that way so for this let me just add myself i can also choose a due date say by 8 i can specify location and other information and just simply create that now what happens if i wanted to review this on my model so i can launch my navis work and there is a quick tool which is available called bim 360 for navis work connect you just have to install it from the app store and this will link your BIM 360 and Naviswork together. So I'm adding up, uh, sorry, I'm launching Naviswork now. Right, so this is my Naviswork and this you can see BIM 360 issue. So let's open up that file. It's a very simple, click onto this file open, locate your BIM 360 where it is saved. At this stage, it's Autobahn, which I'm using. It launches that. And I'll click on to Issues and just simply click Refresh. Now, it should list me. You can see roof is missing in this design. This is what I created up over here. It's an open assigned to Niranjan. I can see it because it has been assigned to me. I'm due. So when I click on to that, it takes me exactly to that particular uh, location, how I have saved it. Now, at this, I can say this roof is open. And I can also write at the rate, say Vivek to confirm. So I, am, I can have a communication right on that. And I can mark it as answered. OK for me. Done. Send. So now you see it has turned into blue. That means it has been answered. So when I go into that, so probably I just have to refresh this. Uh, or maybe it takes a bit of a time to refresh. Otherwise, manually, if I go and just open that file, I'm just showing you it takes about two, three minutes. But when I go into all the issues, so you can see roof is missing, is now answered. So I'm able to communicate directly from my BIM 360 and Navis work effectively. So I am able to work just like a normal office environment, even though I'm not in an office environment using these uh, tools. So apart from that, there are a couple of things that uh, that it has. One is the review and transmittals and the, uh, what the transmittals are like if you have a file and structures uh, in, intact, you wanted to specifically send up to second floor as a transmitter to somebody just use this select the email ids that you wanted to send this transmitter to and send it out it sends as a transmitter it will be send it through email and you will get a notification if when they read this so you can see the transmitter level it has been sent and when you click onto that it shows you whom it has been delivered to whether he has received it or not uh, so, so these are, uh, are tools that can really help you work from home uh, and use just like a normal office. Uh, apart from that, there are a couple of things that it adds uh, adds to that. Specifically, if you wanted to do some comparison of your old drawings, which I believe I have included earlier in my presentation, but again to add for those who are uh, new, you can just select multiple sheets and compare them uh, with the model each other so so this is everything on a cloud you 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 keep your file on cloud there is a lot of stuff that you can do you can see how many things which has been added how many things have been removed how it looks in version one and version two so so you can see how much difference this area and volume makes because of version one and version two all this information is intact on uh, on one single share you can also uh, compare pdfs so if you have this pdf files right you can hit version comparison hit compare it will show you a pdf differences like if there is a drafting mistakes provided these are all exported from the same model uh, keeping the files as it is so if you have moved your drawings here and there or if they are on different coordinates while publishing this will not list down so let's hit compare so
So there you can see version one and version two. It's just still loading up. Now you can see what is the difference. So these couple of doors were not there. So version two, red ones are version two. These doors were added, and this door was moved from here to here. You can also see if some by chance anybody has done any uh, change in the line, which sometimes get neglected if it is not a markup anymore. So, so with this, I believe I have uh, uh, I have I'm close to the session. Am I on the session? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, I lost the uh, session icon in that. So I believe I have covered maximum of it uh, that I can cover on this. So I'm almost close the presentation time. So any questions, if you have, uh, I'm ready, you can uh, put it under the question tab and I would like to answer uh, for next five to ten minutes. So use the question uh, tab. So let me pause my screen. Okay, so question is, can the transmitter be created for nested folders? Um, transmitters as such, uh, let me just see, it actually goes into these folders. Now, if I click on another folder, I'm just trying it on the other side. Let us see. Uh, So I'm just trying it and mine create transmittal. No, it will be only on to that selected folders only. So even though you have missed any particular um, file, you can go back and load some additional, but it cannot add multiple folders. But in that case, if you want, this to be added i would suggest you use review tab that that you select a uh, folders for review pass it through approval stage once it is approved put it on a folder as an approved set and that approved set you send it for transmitting but currently you can't add uh, nested folders <coughs> so hi uh, while Nathan answers the uh, q a I would be uh, putting up the poll questions. You know, we request you to kindly uh, share your feedback. It's uh, we, we we listen to you. We want to hear from you. How did the session go? So uh, parallelly, we'll be running the poll questions. Please do answer. Thank you. So a question is, what is the uh, difference between a project and a plan? So as you have seen, uh, there is a light difference. Like the plan can only handle drawing data projects can handle all type of file formats and and the way it represents also so if you have a pdf which is a vector pdf you have receiving i would suggest use plan but rest for all of them i would recommend using a project folder because that is more versatile and you can use that A uh, publishing process takes a long, yes. So if your file size is a little bigger, it may take a bit of a time, but what it uh, also does is you can go out of that window, continue working and it will list down. Uh, some of the files even I have experienced, it takes a bit of a time, uh, but it mostly depends on the network uh, sometimes, it, in my case, whatever, when I, whatever I have tried so far. We are... So a question is how to share between uh, SharePoint and BIM 360. Uh, for that, I may have to share my screen. So uh, yeah, thank you. 
So I uh, I hope you are able to see my screen. So there is something called uh, BIM. Oh, sorry, Autodesk Exchange. You just log in into Autodesk Exchange Store. You select BIM 360. And under that BIM 360, you have something called Cloudsphere. So what it generally does is it 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 cloud transfer migrate systems kind of connects all your Dropbox, OneDrive, Google, and all those things along with SharePoints on premises or to BIM 360. Uh, so this is what it can uh, it can do. So. <clears throat> So how to integrate between SharePoint, okay. So there is a question. Um, I would like to understand if the issue of data shortcuts for civil 3D file is sorted out now. Uh, issues of data shortcuts, I did not get. Are you talking about uh, Civil 3D collaboration with BIM 360. Uh, if it is a specific, if you can elaborate, I would be able to get some detail on that. Okay, so there is a question on data protection. Uh, so uh, we have a ISO certification in terms of our uh, security that we use, and all the security measures that generally has uh has to be taken for uh cloud services are there so if you just google on uh, google on autodesk uh, data security it will list down the white paper and list down all the certification is certification that we have received for bim 360. <clears throat> Okay, can the transmitter be created for nested folder? No, this I answer. When you transmit the file from BIM 360, is it mandatory to have a BIM 360 account for the file receiver? I mean, a very good question. I am absolutely sorry that I missed this particular thing. I may need to share my screen once again uh, to show. Okay, I hope you are able to see. So the question is whether the receiver needs to have a BIM 360 doc license. So here you can see uh, what we have added. This is a new feature that has been added. If you wanted to share that, we have a share option. And you can either enter the recipient name, or uh, email ID. So this is something where you need to give him a email ID uh, with an access. That means consuming a license. The second option which we have added is creating a link. You can copy this link, paste it on your Outlook, and share it out. And that person need not have a BIM 360 license to open that. He can just simply view it on an Internet Explorer. That's all. So this was a long pending demand, which has been added up this year. This was launched two weeks back. So now everyone who has BIM 360 access, including the trial, uh, extended trial, will be able to share the file by using this copy link. You don't have, uh, yeah, copy all, paste it, and you can send this link through email ID. Thank you for reminding. Okay. Can the transmittal be created for nested folder? Oh, again, the same question, I believe. Uh, the question is how do you sign the PDF drawing so that when the PDF is printed the signatures are on the drawing? Uh, are you, if, if, are, are you talking about the raster or a vector PDF because uh, I support uh, so BIM 360 supports only the vector PDF so if it is a raster that means just a text or a scan we, we won't be able to support then we have to put it under a project folder so I'm, I'm not very clear how the answer is so if the file has a digital print you can keep it on the project folders and then you can open and print it from there it will retain all the informations uh, that 
that is assigned to that. So there is a question, do we have any hierarchy as a Bentley project wise, like move the model to a next level? Uh, so I'm not uh, uh, expert on the project wise side, but what we have here is something that I have not touched base this because there was no update uh, specifically, but that's the review process. So if you have a project which has reached to a certain stage and when it has to go for an approval uh, of that and that approved if it is approved and it has to go to a site or a different vendor you can use the review process to push that onto a selected folder set so either from your working work sets it goes to a shared work sets and from shared work sets it goes to a published work set those workflows you can do it under review so probably if you can give us our uh, contact we can connect you back and explain that particular feature So the question is, can we have the old version of file when it required? Yes. So from the day one up to today, whatever save that you have done on that will be retained. So when you open the file, you have an option to list down all the version and select which one you wanted to review. So in case if you are opening an old version, it will give an exclamation mark uh, showcasing that you are currently working an outdated model. Will you be sharing the link to download the software? Uh, yes, so so if you can just simply go on uh, BIM 360 trial as I showed you in the beginning, uh, you can start a trial and use it for 90 days. Will I have to pay this service after August? Uh, currently we have kept it for 90 days. There is no plan after that. So this is specifically for this uh, circumstance that we are right now in. So we strongly hope that it doesn't stay that long and before that you will come back to office and use the work uh, as required. But as you can see on our uh, message from our CEO uh, that he mentioned that currently it is mentioned up to 90 days, but it will be reviewed as and when required. So in case if that lockdown extend, there are chances we can look into that to extend it. So that is how it has been planned so far. If project is complete 2D drawing based, then apart from cloud based access, what other are the benefit? So if you're completely using 2D, you have the version controls, you have version comparison and all those things as a part. And also the 2D drawing itself, you can view it on uh, handheld devices as I showed you the the CAD model which I was working is completely at 2D I'm just saving it the only thing is when I'm setting up this BIM 360 I don't need a complex VPN connectivity or anything it's just a regular internet that users can have across and then access the file through BIM 360 rather than a complex VPN or any kind of network you need to have Next question. So we usually publish the drawing from Revit application, but in your demo, you have published all sheets from the BIM 360. If we once upload the Revit file, is it directly extracted all the sheets? Yes, if you upload the sheet, uh, it will extract all the sheets uh, by default. Uh, from Revit also you can publish that uh, drawing there are multiple ways which we with which we can do and when I'm uploading that Revit file this was a non work sharing file but for the work sharing file I have to start it from my Revit itself so how central file can be accessed uh, from the model so central file is accessed directly like uh, uh, file from, from our uh, file open dialog box. So you have your all recent files that I showed you uh, in uh, BIM 360. So probably let me just quickly share my screen once again. And so, so, so when you are working on any of your models, so you have this recent files that you see, you can either access this or you can use the file open. 
uh, so you click onto this recent uh, by default you will see these quick access ones so the cloud one shows they are currently on bim 360 these are at my local so give it a moment it is just refreshing my so you can see my bim 360 now if i have a central file i wanted to locate that just locate <coughs> the file over there and open that project so you can see this is a work sharing cloud model this is a simple cloud model that means a simple upload that i have done and this is my work sharing cloud model <coughs> so i can open it that way as well So when you transmit the file from BIM 360, is it mandatory to have BIM 360 account? For the transmittal, yes, uh, but for the share, no. So for transmittal, yes, it will only select the users from the list. Uh, so there is a question about recorded session. Avinash, are we sharing this recording session later on? Yes, Niranjan, the sessions will be sent to the, all the attendees. Okay, sure. So we will be sharing this recording session. Okay, so I believe I have crossed 17 minutes post the uh, time that was allotted for this. So I may have to do a stop here. So any questions which I have not answered, please do send it out. Uh, we'll take this. Uh, if you can pass it on your contact on the chat, we'll connect with you and we'll reply to you. So I would like to end this session uh, now. Uh, thank you all for joining. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you.